Welcome back to SOS. I'm Staff Sergeant Badass. All right. Today, I am making 10 knife sheets. Let's pretend it's for Dave Cadbury. And uh, who cares, right? <laughs> Could be for anybody. Mysterious person. Okay. Uh, I'm doing it for... This is the Pathfinder Knife Shop knife. And... I've got to make a sheath for 10 of these knives, okay? Uh, yeah, 10 knives. Christmas is coming, and I wanted to kind of run you through this in case you ever decide for whatever reason you want to mass produce a identical knife, identical uh, sheath, and do that sort of thing. Holidays, I mean, you could mass produce items for somebody else, and uh, several other reasons. Don't know why, but... I figured I'd take you through this in case you decide to do it so you would have a good example okay let's I'm gonna have to take you into a totally different room all right okay I lied about that we will go to the other room in just a minute first I've got to show you this all right now this is probably gonna be part of some sort of series I uh, I had started with this piece of leather first I just grabbed a, a, sl a slice of leather and uh, First, I wanted to make sure that the knife was going to fit in it once you folded the knife, okay? That was my key first thing to do. Now, um, there's going to be, you're going to have to take into account rivets, you know, your your rivet, rivet, and rivet type ordeal. You're going to have your stitching and maybe some markings and whatnot. All these things you got to take into account. Now, putting the knife into just a folded piece of leather first and then having to cut it out to your liking. This is how I liked it when I set it up. I liked the flow of this. You could reach in, grab it, or you could use this to grab it. I'm not leaving this on here. I'm only keeping that on there for uh, the work I've got to do. I've got to make sure I've got something to hang it by for now. I'm, I'm using this, but this will fold right behind here. It's just a simple little cut, it goes up, and then I rounded this off, and then this just folds under there like this. Real simple design, nothing too fancy. And taking something like this, let's bring you over. Now we're in a different room. There you go. So what I do next is I, uh, this is, I think this is about a belly or so, uh, big fat belly of leather. All right, so you take from here and... Uh, I just lay these out here and I make sure they stay the same direction because if I cut them, if I if lay them out like that, that'll make it a right-handed sheath, okay? So it'll be right here on your right-hand side. So you want to keep doing it the same exact way and have them all facing the same direction. No matter what you do, they'll all be the same direction. Um, so you wouldn't ever want to flip it over. You keep it in this direction here to do all your drawing. Because if it's ever on the other side, guess what? It's now a left-handed left-handed sheath. It, accidents happen. People do it all the time. But you don't want to waste leather. And this stuff gets expensive. Okay, this is a big expensive piece of leather here. <clears throat> so, basically you just take it here. And I try to utilize by keeping them as close together as possible. Like here, I literally will use my razor. And my razor will actually slice between these all right um we'll uh i'll get back to this and i will show you more i hope i gotta get all this cut out and hopefully i can take you through the steps and show you how it all turns out okay so now basically i'm doing a bunch of edge trimming i've got it all all trimmed out i got another one sitting back there in the back and uh, this one's already completed. I just had that in the pile. But uh, first things first, I usually use this guy here, my wheel, like I said before. It's a razor wheel. And I do, I line these up so they're nice and straight. I use this guy here as my guide. It's my ruler. And as this runs up, you know, it just sits right in there and just slides all the way through. It's a nice straight line cut. Now, once I get that cut, I have these edges I have to worry about now. I can't I can't use that to turn. It doesn't it, it doesn't work like that. So don't even try it. 
but I can use my scissors and usually what I do I just I start at one end wherever I'm going and just start going at it but I'll have uh, when I'm done I just turn go around a curve it's not a big deal I got the front of this and the back of this on each of these to do just like this on each one of these I'll have to do this exact same thing I'm doing right now I've already done I've completed two of them so I've got eight more to go I've just got to get around here so uh, once I finish this one I'll actually have what seven left to go so uh, there we go I got seven more of these I got to do so uh, that's that part see how, how neat and clean that is and then they'll all look like this when I'm done each one of them just like that okay next step here all right, so I got my stack of uh, skins here and they're all cut out nice and neat on every one of them I just wanted to show one more thing that I've done that uh, I don't normally show on the show but um, I had to sit and uh, cut every one of these out. This is to prevent it, to prevent the blade from digging into the uh, stitches. Now, uh, I am going to be adding a couple of uh, uh, blade stops for the... Basically, I'm adding a rivet down at the end, and then uh, I've got one going at the top. But I had to measure these out to make them line up perfectly like that okay so they come all the way up now i might have to do a little trimming like i might have uh cut one just a little bit uh too little or too much off so this one's got more than enough material it's actually a little bit too much but when the blade goes in there it's going to be sliding into this instead of ramming into whatever else now, a lot of people won't do that and they might end up with a sheet that won't last so long but when this folds up, let's see here, if I can get it to see when that folds up, and this is going to picture this flush, I know it's hard to see that now, but that goes all the way up, all the way through there, just like that, and of course I've got to stitch that whole thing, and uh, I'm not doing double stitching craziness, like two lines of stitching or anything, I'm just, I'm doing a single stitch, because I'm going to, I'm going to have this, supporting it plus i'm going to have a rivet through and then i'm going to do a rivet and then another one probably about mid section here just do two down here at the end for protection and then right here at the top it's going to have one going straight through and then you're going to have your riveted ones back here but i need to tan this next steps tanning i need to sit and do all that real quick the tanning process is real simple I'm a I use a, a two-part type ordeal I need to add a little bit more of this but this is my leather sheen I mix it with my uh, some other hippies out there probably frown upon it and be like what is he doing why would he do that let's grab a little more of that yeah it's kind of like adding a shot of jack to that, just like throw it in there. That, well, that was a splash of coke. Here's a splash of coke. I'm just kidding. Uh, all right, here we go. Boom. Shake it up real nice. Get my desired color. And you just. I'm not really worried about wearing gloves again today. Here I am doing it again. I don't care. Now I might have to do this a couple of times. It's going to be a while before I can. Now I'm days into this. So I'm not. I'm, as far as the video goes. You guys are going to see this a little bit later on. By the time you guys catch this. Yeah, the, the other color, the color that I'm using is just saddle tan, for those of you that are probably going to want to ask that question. Now, I'm going to have to do some touch-ups later. What do you want, dog? 
there's any imperfections, I'm going to add another coat layer. This is just my initial coat to get me started, and then I'll start. Uh, I got to do the back side of these too. So first I'm going to do the front, then I'm going to turn around and go do the back. But I need it to dry a little bit first. But you'll have to do this a couple of times. It's not going to just pop and do, and, and do what it wants to do. See, it's just, you're going to have a few little streaks in it. Shut up, dog. It's just their dumb poodle wearing diapers. Are you mad? Are you mad, dog, mm -hmm. that that poodle's wearing diapers? You don't like poodles that wear diapers? If you want to wear diapers, dog, I'll put you in some diapers. Huh? You ain't got nothing to say? <laughs> I think you're done now, huh? You want to go out? You want to go bark at, bark at the dog across the street? All right, so it looks a little something like that. Now I gotta, I said you're gonna have like these white streaks, you can probably see them. I've gotta go back over it again, so I've gotta make a pass over all these, and uh, I'll be right back. I got quite a few of these, I just about finished up here, and I've got the back side of this that I've got to do. So, up to a certain point, I need to do that. I don't need to do the whole thing. I just need to kind of get kind of around here. I like that. It's not really going to get seen. But I just need to get to a certain level. I don't need to do the whole thing on the inside. Just where it folds. This back spot here might get seen. So I don't need to sit here and do the whole thing. I just want to show this part of it. Huh? You don't like that dog out there? Huh, dog? Smurge. Get him, dog. Get him. Get him. Something like that. I'm not getting too crazy. What is it? What is it? Get him! Get him! Oh, you're getting all worked up. I think you're just more mad you can't go play. That's about like that. Nothing too crazy. You're just going to do that back side a little bit. Knife's going to go right in here. You don't want the blade setting uh, in uh, too much of that leather sheen. So, Because you kind of want it laying in the leather like that. But no big deal. You're not worried about the look of that, so you just just kind of throw it wherever. It doesn't matter. I've got the rest of these I've got to do. I've already double coated all these things. They're starting to dry pretty nicely, so uh, I'm I'm pretty sure sometime late tomorrow I'll be able to start snapping them all together and and doing my stitching and everything. Uh, there's things you want to skip on that could waste your time, so don't do a bunch of time wasting. Don't worry about the edge, okay? Because when you get done putting all this together, you're going to have to worry about the edge. But then anyways, you might have to do some sanding. And if you go uh, putting all this on the edges of each one of these, you could have wasted a lot of time doing all that when you could have just waited and uh, sanded it all together as one piece. That's why the center sections, you don't see them out here getting any layers. They don't need it. You know, because it's the center section there. And uh, if anything, you could sand the edge and, and uh, wax the whole thing if you wanted to. When I'm done with these, they will be weather weatherproof and bombproof pretty, pretty much. So uh, they're going to be great, uh, great pieces to actually use and work with. So they're going to be great, great sheets for people. So an update. Uh, I have these spacers glued in place they set overnight and had to get glued uh, you have to use clips or something like this now you can pick stuff like this up from the dollar store I'm trying to save people a few bucks here but I buy them uh, a few dozen packs of these things I I didn't know I thought I had more than this but I've got enough for be able to uh, do five sheets at a time and I go ahead and I'm pre-gluing and then I do riveting and stitching and all that stuff and, and sanding, you know, you got to do sanding too. 
but it's always best if you're going to start sanding on something you want to make sure you already have your rivets and your stitching done because uh, if the glue uh, the glue for the leather gets hot it'll actually unadhere it's kind of it's one of those things I mean it's just regular glue it's not like hot glue sticks or anything but it's just a regular type of glue so um, it's just to better secure it but what I do first is I do all of the sheaths with this this side first and then I just let them cure overnight um, then I apply glue and fold I give them the fold and then they look like this and, you know they get their clips all the way up down the spine and I'm gonna let these set and these will dry and then um, I've got the other five sheets here I've got to do this same thing too so uh, that's that's where I'm at now and then after this I'll be able to do riveting and uh, I can go ahead and make my holes for stitching and all the other fun stuff so uh, a lot of fun stuff still on the list here all right seen I've got my uh, let me zoom in on that I've already got my pre selected holes where my holes are gonna go and I'm gonna be using this today because I'm punching through three extremely thick pieces of leather and I'm just not gonna make it without my the help of my my press and sometimes I do this and I don't do it on camera this makes the hole easy for stitching and also makes my life a lot easier just overall the hole will be nice and straight nice and aligned for three pieces of leather to get stitched up now once I'm done doing this I'm going to cut my groove and so you can see this a nice start of some holes they're kind of burnt on the inside there got my light here it's pretty nice to have that but uh it actually burns and it's not a drill bit all it is is just a straight piece of metal and uh but it works pretty good for doing this if you need larger holes because i'm it's going to be double stitched so it's not it's uh, one one stitching through here the holes will be one but um uh, the 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 actual thread itself will be two pieces of thread actually double or tripled i think that's about right it's it's going to be quite a few uh strands going through there so uh let's go all the way down and um i'll stitch this by itself i skip here and then i stitch this by itself so that's how that works and um the extra uh, stitch is so that in the event that one stitch breaks you have another stitch to follow up in case I don't know what if but I got to cut a groove a channel uh, I've got something for slicing a channel but basically it it makes a pit in this so that the thread will actually sink into the leather that's the next step after I get done doing this all right uh, I got a I got some holes to make okay so I've cut my groove for my stitches front and rear using my groove cutting tool so I've gotten what I do is I rock back and forth when I do it to make sure I get deep enough and I just go do both sides I've still got sanding to do so you have to ignore all this this stuff here the double layers and well the triple layer and everything you gotta ignore that for now there's still going to be touch-ups in the end. All right, now I got to get to stitching. Okay, double stitched. Not just 
a single stitch but it's been stitched twice okay so all the way through front side back side uh, all the way down these are sections are separated this one's been stitched by itself this one's stitched by itself now on to sanding why not uh, after I get the sanding out of the way I can go ahead and work on the tongue by getting that folded over and uh, do some touch-ups ending takes the longest but it's worth it really I mean just that's nice smooth nice smooth edge there and you can tell it really does make it look a lot uh, more durable <laughs> being that it's got three layers instead of just the just pressing one of these together you see a lot of them people guys just take it and just shove it together and they're done that's pretty much it and you really want to have that extra layer there and it also it's great for a knife stop a blade stop uh, to keep it from cutting through your sheath okay so that's done that's done I'm, I'm gonna have to edge dress this and I've got to go ahead and fold this over I'm probably gonna go ahead and add my mark to the back of this do the t-rex stamp on here real quick before I move on let's go ahead and place that in there that way uh, whoever gets this can see the t-rex stamp you could get it wet first to do the stamp but it tends to work just fine but that's where I'm gonna put the stamp at and uh, actually why did I do that okay this one's gonna have a hidden stamp <laughs> I always make mistakes it happens all the time all right so here we go let's do it the right way this time stop laughing stop laughing I know you're laughing that's if you've watched this long right all right so the stamp will be here as you were there we go anyway but then I, I put my holes real simple I'm just gonna fold it over and uh, I'm gonna get this real good and tight and then I'm gonna make sure I I'm just gonna punch it's just gonna punch straight through here and then put my rivets in there they have a couple of rivets right there and I'll have a nice solid one-piece belt loop so this is all one piece of leather this isn't like hacked up pieces of leather tacked together this is this is a solid piece that's measured so uh, it it takes a lot to do something like this the edge uh, the edge sealer is gonna look nice on it I think it's gonna turn out great and uh, I just got some touch-ups I've got to do around overall you know where it's it's lost a little bit of the color on the edges from sanding and stuff but no big deal Be back in a minute okay I've sealed the edge up still drying a little bit but I uh, if you if you've noticed from the last scene you just saw uh, all this is sealed all around here is sealed back of here is sealed again gives it a darker look and give you got nice rivets in there these are not going anywhere <laughs> Uh, it would take King Kong to rip those off uh, There's a couple little spots in here still drying so but um, it sinks in and actually coats the uh, Stitches a lot more and you get a double layer of that. So uh, It's weatherproof. It's bomb proof. It's going to outlive probably me and someone uh, Someone could take this on for the rest of their lives for the most part, but um, there's there's no way I mean you'd really have to just be a jack wagon to destroy this thing so uh, there you go see how thick that thing is pretty ridiculous huh zoom in on it one more time for you nice sheath very nice sheath and there you have it nice little sheath I, I put this on here so I can hang the blade back up so I wouldn't have anything happen to the blade but yeah it's a little stiff it's gonna take some some working but uh over time you got like this notch right here at the beginning it I made it a little bit thicker here at the notch if you can see that it's it's just to prevent the blade from coming out and you're gonna have to push the blade in and take the blade out a couple of times in order to uh, to get it fitted but yeah once you see 
Second time goes in nicely. And taking it out this time, see if it's as hard. Yeah, still a little stiff. But yeah, it's going to be on your side anyway, so, but you got some breaking in to do. But in the opening in there, you see it's quite nice. Anyways, yeah, that was it. I think it's cool. I'm glad I made it a little bit, uh, a little bit thicker and it's a little bit harder to get the blade in and out, which is a good thing. You don't want to, you know, be upside down or some trash and have your blade come out. You don't want that to happen anyways. So it's got some pur purpose. It was made for a man. So, uh, a man's man. All right. Well, that's it. You're watching SOS. I'm Stas Armbadas. Have a beautiful, fabulous, fantastic rainbow unicorn pony kind of day and take it easy. That was a lot of work. I've only got, uh, what, nine more to make. <laughs> I've, I finished this one first just so I could get the video done. All right, I got to get back to work.